Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on getting started with RAD Pivot Grid for RAD controls for Windows Forms. So what is P RAD Pivot Grid you may be asking? So Telerix Pivot Grid for Windows Forms is a control that empowers your applications with similar functionality to the pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. It takes large chunks of data and summarizes it into a human readable way with the help of aggregates and field descriptors. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2012 and take a look at how to use this new and powerful control. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the RAD Pivot Grid in action. So we're going to begin with File, New, and then Project. We're going to select the Telerik Templates. We're going to select C Sharp RAD Controls Windows Forms Application. And I'm just going to give this the name of RAD Control WinForms Pivot Grid Q3 and then go ahead and press OK. The next screen that pops up is the Project Configuration Wizard. I'm just going to place a check mark here on Telerik.WinControls.PivotGrid and you'll see the dependent references have automatically been added for us. So from here I'm going to go ahead and hit the Finish button and Visual Studio will begin spinning up. So if I scroll down just a little bit here I'm going to just do a quick zoom in and I'm going to show you that Telerik.WinController's, WinControls.ChartView.PivotGrid.UI and Telerik Common has been added to this project automatically for us. So I'm going to come back up to the top, I'll just close out of that and I'll double click on my Form1.CS. So we're going to search our toolbox for Red Pivot Grid and once we do that I'm going to select it and I'm just going to drag and drop it onto my form here. So now that I did that the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the way this item is docked. So I'm going to go underneath docking and I'm just going to center it but I'm also going to search for a button as well because we're going to show a printing demo in just a moment as well. So I'm just going to type in rad button and I'll drag and drop that onto the same screen here and we will select dock and for this time this dock we're going to go ahead and select it at the very bottom while we're in here we'll just go ahead and scroll down just a tad and we'll go to text and we'll just name this print preview and hit OK so I'll expand the form out just a little bit where we can see everything so the very first thing that I'm going to do to this project is I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to add some data to it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select add and I'm going to go existing item and I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit and go to my temp folder here and I'm going to select all files and I have an access database here that's already ready called cellsdata.mdb. So I'm just going to double click that and so the data source configuration wizard will launch. I'm going to select data set, select next. I'm going to select all of the tables in that. We'll just leave the default name and then we'll go ahead and we'll press finish. Now that we did that we can click on the smart tag to our pivot grid control and we can go down to open property builder. Once we select open property builder you'll see the rad pivot grid property builder in your dialog screen you can select data source we're going to select other data sources and we're just going to keep drilling down until we get to the actual cells data so now that we are at cells data we have the option that we can either turn on or off a couple of different features such as dragging and drop in context and sorting we're going to leave all of these at their default and go ahead and click on fields so now that we click on fields we're going to select date here, then product, then promotion, and then net. From this screen, we are going to go down to our row labels, and underneath our row labels, we're going to drag and drop product and date to the column labels. So I'm just going to grab date and drag it over here to the column labels, as well as product and we're also going to add in advertisement. So 
I want to place a check here in advertisement and you can see it's been added here. So at this point I could go ahead and I could select OK and we could actually run our application now. So if we run our application you can see Form 1 has been loaded and that we have data inside of it. And inside of this we have our promotion of course. We have sorting capabilities there as well as Excel like filtering. And then, of course, we have date and we have product. You can sort these as well if you would like to. You can break this down into just 2010 without showing the rest of these fields. And, of course, if we just wanted to see the data, we could get down to 1 free with 10 in 2010 add 39,000. 034. We see we have a nice little tooltip that comes up there. It gives us a grand total. We can also see extra discount. It also has a grand total of these two sums. Well, we have a button that we haven't done anything with yet, and this is the print preview. So if your user would like to print this information, they can do so very easily. So let's go ahead and add in that functionality now. So we're just going to close out of the application, and we're going to double click on print preview. So I'm going to collapse the toolbox and I'm going to expand our screen here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up our using statements. There's a couple of using statements that I know I want to use and I'm just going to go ahead and add those in with this project. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and I'm going to add in two event handlers. And I will paste those in after the this dot cells data table adapter and I'll scroll over just a tad and I'll explain those so you see we have two of them added here we have a print element formatting and a print element paint so the print element formatting is going to be used to do some validation on the cell and in this example we're going to use it to color the background of the cells of different values with different colors so let's go ahead and drop in the print element formatting method. So as you can see here, we're getting the cell, and then once we get the cell, we're doing a couple of checks on it. And if the value is less than 2000, then we're going to do a cell.backcolor and give it a color of red. If it's greater than 3000, then we're going to color it green. So we've added in the print element formatting. Now we need to add in our print element paint. So we can go ahead now and drop in our print element paint event handler. So we'll just do that right here. And once we have added that in, let's go ahead and examine the code a little bit for this. So you'll see that we are instantiating a pivot cell print element. And we're just defining that by a name of cell and it equals e dot print element as pivot cell print element. So we're just checking to see if the cell is null and the cell value is null. And if it's not null, then what we're doing is we're going inside of this and we're checking to see if the cell value is greater than 2000 or if it's less than 3000. And if it matches that criteria, then what we're going to do is we're going to simply use a brush just define it by B equals a new hatch brush and then we're going to go ahead and fill in a couple of properties such as we're going to set it as a backwards diagonal and then a color. After that we're just going to fill that rectangle with the brush and then the E dot bounds. So we can see here in the comments so anything that's red for below 2000 this is going to be what is the cell will be colored a hatch is going to be between the 2000 and 3000 and then green is above the 3000 which we can see how that was defined up here a little bit earlier so if we go down to our last line of code here our last method and we just add in a this dot rad pivot grid one dot print preview we can now go ahead and run the application and see this in action. So I'm going to run the app. Once I run the app, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this just a little bit where you can see everything. And I'm going to hit the print preview button. Once I hit the print preview button, we will simply use our buttons up here at the top to zoom in. And now that I'm zooming in, 
just going to zoom in a little bit here, you can see that we have uh, red is for anything that was below 2,000. We have green for anything that was above 3,000. And then anything between the 2,000 and 3,000 values, we are using this hatch uh, brush style here. So I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about the pivot grid introduced in Q3 2012. So thanks so much for watching and please tune in to tv.telleric.com for more videos and check out blogs.telleric.com for the latest news and announcements. This is Michael Crump signing off.